So today I was driving the Jeep and one of the radiator hoses somehow got caught in the alternator fan. And I was able to get back home. I made a patch out of some ketchup packets and zip ties, which is temporary. But they wanted $26 for a new hose. And I figured, well, I've got this can of shaving cream that's empty. Maybe I can somehow use that to fix it. It's a lot more free than 26 bucks. So let's have a look. As you can see here, we've got the amazing 2.8 V6 from 1986 that GM, you know, decided to bestow upon the world. One of the worst engines ever made, but you know, it's all right. As you can see here, this hose came in contact with that fan on the radiator, or the radiator hose came in contact with the alternator fan. So it's a temporary fix. I squeezed some ketchup out of some packets and I had some zip ties and kind of put those on there and it got me back here, but obviously that's not a regular, uh, regular patch job there that's going to last very long. So we're going to use a shaving cream can, which is approximately the same diameter. Well, it's a little bit bigger, but we'll see if we can make it work. And uh, we're going to see if we can fix this for free. Now, for starters, this can's empty, but uh, we want to go ahead and make sure all the pressure's out of it. So there's a little bleed valve here on the bottom. I'm just going to point that away from me and uh, cut a little hole in that. You can see there goes the pressure. Now we're completely empty and it smells a lot more like shaving cream out here than it used to. So we can take this cap off. There we go, cap's gone. And uh, now there's no pressure, so you can squeeze it. So I'm gonna grab the Sawzall and uh, get to work on this. Here we have my absolute favorite type of Sawzall blade in the world. It's the Torch by Milwaukee. These things rip through anything, like it's not even there. And I do mean rip, it doesn't cut. It's definitely a ripping action. <clears throat> so we're gonna see if we can ruin this can here. There we go, I found a nice old drippy floor mat. safety as I mentioned before. So I'm not wearing gloves. I have to remove the uh, inner mechanism here. The nice thing is this uh, shaving cream works as a degreaser so that if you happen to have any grease on any of your tools it'll all be uh, mysteriously cleaned up by the time you're done with this because it's a good degreaser. I actually use shaving cream to clean your gun if you're in a, uh, in a spot and don't have anything else. There we go. You can see it's getting all over me too, but that's all right. There we've got our tube. So uh, for this next step, I'm actually going to put on gloves because uh, I, I, I like being cut and all, but I don't know. I don't feel like bleeding today. So got here. It's a nice big gardening glove, and we'll go to town on the other half of this. I'm going to cut it right down near the seam here. Uh, so there's a little bit of strength left, otherwise it'll just get ruined by this blade. There you go. Got a tube you can see through. A little bit of crap in there, but... Uh, should be able to use this as a plug here for our hose. All right, so what we're gonna go ahead and do now is I'm gonna clean these pliers, be nice and shiny, and we're gonna go ahead and take apart this temporary patch that I put on here. We'll use the uh, serrated knife edge on here. That comes right off. Catch a packets fell down in there. As you can see, well here, as you can see, there's a nice little hole. Now let me get a flashlight here so you can see it better. Nice little hole there. A little groove or that fan cut right through. So what we're gonna do, since we're just gonna take this hose, 
there's no pressure in the radiator first. All right, we're good there. It's already leaked out. I'm gonna take this hose and just cut it right in half, right there. Probably gonna get some more antifreeze on the ground, but that's all right. There we go. Got two halves. All I have to do is uh, put our can in there and we'll be set. We've got our can that I cut earlier and uh, I just realized I didn't really measure this at all. I just kind of eyeballed it. If you notice here, it's too big, but not a little too big. It's way too big. So there's no way I could clamp that down to make this thing actually seal. So I'm going to find another suitable can uh, for this project. So give me a few minutes here and I'll come up with something. I found something that's approximately the right size. It's uh, this can of butane fuel. Unfortunately, it's almost full. So I'm going to find out a way to use this up before we can cut this in half and use it on a repair here. All right, so I believe I found a viable method of uh, emptying this propane butane can here. Um, I've got one of these uh, gas-powered uh, airsoft guns. And uh, basically you just fill the magazine with the uh, butane, like so. And looks like we've already got some ammo in there. Doesn't look like it's strong enough. Give that another shot here. I think it's filling, it's kind of hard to tell. Normally you use green gas in these, or propane, not butane, because it's uh, a little bit different. As you can see, it does not work very well. It's not really designed for this gun. It sure smells bad, too. But, you know, you've got to be responsible and not just spray the stuff into the air, because that's probably illegal, I'm sure. But then again, this thing doesn't seem to work very well. All right, that just sprayed butane over a lot of stuff. Well, then again, there's first time for everything. There's still a little bit left in there. Finished emptying this little guy. All right, and this should probably have a similar pr preparation process as the other one. Uh, I do believe it's mostly empty, or empty enough, so I'm gonna cut a little hole here in the back of it so that we can get the rest of the gas out. Point it away from yourself. There we go. As you can see, there's a hole in the can now, so it's completely empty. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my glove. All right, get rid of this mess here a little bit. Got the glove, and we'll go ahead and cut into this one. I'm going to do this one a little bit differently because the can's smaller. Nice little tearing action there. There we go. As you can see, I really, really like these sawzall blades. They're called the torch for a reason. All right. Go ahead and move this so it's not getting wet. We're going to want to kind of clean up these edges here a little bit. As you can see, it's a little smashed and jagged and all kinds of stuff. We probably don't want floating around inside the engine. What I'm going to do here is just kind of fold it over on itself here a little bit. Just kind of make a little lip. The best part is it has this cool thing that says butane fuel. So people will know exactly where I got this radiator hose from. A can of butane. Go ahead and smash this out flat here. Just demonstrates if you're on the side of the road and you need to fix your radiator hose. One of the ways it's possible to do it. Got a number of things lying around. Got a arsenal of possible things you can fix it with at your disposal. Alright, it's sort of round. Kind of shape it so it's a little bit more round maybe. There we go. Good enough for who it's for. Has this nice little butane fuel thing on there, professional grade, non-clogging. And, uh, all right, we'll go ahead and get this installed in our engine. We're ready to go here. So we've got our little can of butane here that we've prepared the edges on earlier. Essentially, it's pretty easy. You just uh, shove it down inside this hose here. Being careful not to cut yourself, because remember these edges are razor sharp. And now my phone's ringing. Just a minute here. Eh, that's no one I want to talk to. Now, if you notice here, 
I put that in there, but I didn't have my butane fuel logo pointing out, and I definitely want people to see that, and the fact that it's triple filtered. So I'm going to put this back in here again with that logo facing up. Got to kind of work it in there. And uh, you'll want to kind of get it in there just far enough so that you can get a clamp around it. All right. Beautiful. Let me go find some clamps. So I've got a collection of radiator hose clamps here. You can select one or two of these. Uh, well, obviously two. They're sort of close to the right size. Not usually a fan of the ones with these little paddle turny things, but it's the only one I have right now. I'll just go ahead and make it work. Let's go ahead and stick this on here. Get this tightened down. I'm going to get it right near the edge there, just enough so you've got clamping action all the way around this thing. All right, then we can go ahead and install it on this hose here. Once again, being careful because it's very sharp. And it has been cut out of jagged metal. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Just barely see the word butane. It should be good enough. Put this other clamp on here. All right, give these things tight, so, tighten down so they're snug. We don't want to go too tight on these because it'll definitely crush our little thing that we made. And in theory, those jagged edges that we folded over should kind of act as a hook to hold it all in place. Looks like we should be good. Let's get those kind of lightly on there and see an edge around it. And if you notice this time, right where that can is, it's right where that fan on the alternator is. So it gives us a nice little notch right here so that it's not going to come in contact with that fan anymore. And look, it says butane. It's going to add an extra, what, 10 horsepower probably? All right, let's fill this thing up with coolant and uh, see if it works. Some high-grade coolant here. As you can see, it's clear. This is the kind that you can spill on the ground and it has absolutely zero negative effect on the environment. Get that partially filled. I'm going to go ahead and fire it up here to get the rest of it uh, filled up. Listen to that thing for... Good to go. Seems like I got the clamp a little bit too tight and we got some leakage there. So I'm gonna have to pull that back out and uh, fix it. I uh, had to slide that forward a little bit more and got the clamp sort of turned a little bit. Got a bit of a leak right there, so we got about this much now that's inside there, so hopefully this will work. We got our radiator refilled here and uh, I think we should be ready to go. We'll try it again. Looks like we got some steam. Probably gonna be another leak. Oh well, I'll have to stop and fix that. From what I've found, the best way to get rid of uh, steam coming out of the front of your car is to drive fast enough so that you can't see it. And uh, yeah, it seems to be working pretty well. The gauge here is still within an acceptable range. I'm gonna keep the heat on here and uh, make sure I can tell if it runs out of water. If it goes cold, uh, we got a problem. If there's still heat coming out, there's plenty of coolant left.